A study published in the journal Biology Letters has found that exposure to microplastics can disrupt a hermit crab's ability to choose a shell. Hermit crabs do not grow their own shells, but instead use shells from other marine creatures, typically those of sea snails, to protect themselves. As they grow, they swap shells for ones that are a better fit. Researchers from Queen's University Belfast and Liverpool John Moores University placed 29 female hermit crabs into a tank containing seawater, seaweed, and 4mm diameter polyethylene beads. A control group of 35 crabs was placed into a tank with only seawater and seaweed. After five days, the crabs were moved into lower quality shells and presented with the option to choose a higher quality shell. Only 10 of the crabs that had been exposed to microplastics explored the more ideal shell, compared to 25 crabs from the control group. Only 9 of the crabs that had been exposed to microplastics moved into the new shells, compared to 21 from the control group. This suggests exposure to microplastics impairs the crab's cognition and that microplastics in general can have important effects on an animal's behavior. Garrett Arnott, co-author of the new research from Queen's University Belfast, told The Guardian he was surprised by the results. We hypothesize that either some aspect of the polyethylene is getting into them to affect their decision-making, or else it is an indirect effect that the presence of the plastic in the tank might be influencing their feeding behavior. For example, he said, based on the striking finding in this study, this would suggest that there could be a long-term impact in the natural world. But we need to do more work on that, he said. According to 2015 data published in the journal Science, between 4.8 and 12.7 million tons of plastic enter the ocean each year. Research from Greenpeace suggests that up to 10% of the plastic produced worldwide ends up in the ocean. It seems like a new study comes out every day about the dangers our obsession with plastic poses to our health and the environment. A new study led by the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration's Pacific Islands Fisheries Science Center has found prey-sized plastics present in larval fish nurseries and surface slicks off the west coast of the island of Hawaii. According to a news release from the NOAA, surface slicks are created when waves converge near coastlines and form ribbons of smooth water. These contain large amounts of plankton for larval fish that live in the surface slicks. The study, published in the journal Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences, found seven times more plastic present in the surface slicks than larval fish. Researchers also found that plastics were 126 times more concentrated in the slicks than surface water off the coast of the same island. Scientists involved in the study dissected hundreds of larval fish from the surface slicks and found that pelagic fish species, including swordfish and mahi-mahi, and larval fish such as triggerfish, all contained tiny pieces of plastic in their stomachs. This is the first time these fish species have been found consuming plastic just days after being spawned. Jameson Gov, a researcher from the NOAA who was involved with the study, stated in the agency's news release that it is alarming that larval fish are surrounded by plastic waste and are consuming plastic at such a vulnerable stage in their life. Scientists are unsure of the impact of plastic ingestion on larval fish. The study says that plastic could affect their development or even reduce their rate of survival. Previous studies had found that plastic ingestion in adult fish causes gut blockage, malnutrition, and accumulation of plastic toxins. A new study published in Current Biology determined BPA-free plastic products aren't necessarily safer. Twenty years ago, when the researchers conducted the experiment for the first time, BPA was found to give rise to chromosomally abnormal embryos in mice, leading the researchers to believe the same could be happening to humans. BPA was found to interfere with the endocrine system in the body, which regulates everything from fertility to brain development. In this new study, researchers used BPS, a bisphenol which is used to replace BPA, and found the mice in the study all began to develop reproductive problems even though they were kept in BPA-free cages, similar to their previous study. BPA was found to affect the developing brain, heart, lungs, as well as other organs in the body. The researchers are warning the public about the dangers of different types of plastics used in consumer products as they could ultimately affect the body. A researcher involved in a study said plastic containers should never be put into the microwave or dishwasher because this causes the chemicals in the container to leak out. A new study published in PLOS1 shows that plastic releases greenhouse gases, yet another contributor to climate change. The study found that some of the commonly used plastics release methane and ethylene once they were exposed to sunlight. 
EcoWatch reports Dr. Sarah Jean Royer, lead author of the study, said they originally set to measure methane produced by organisms in seawater when she realized that most of the methane was being emitted from the plastic bottles in the sea. Dr. Royer and her team tested plastics such as polycarbonate, polypropylene, polystyrene, and low-density polyethylene, along with others found in food packaging, textiles, and other plastic goods. When plastic is exposed to light from the sun, it breaks down, which exposes more plastic area to the sun, resulting in greater gas emissions. One of the plastics, low-density polyethylene, was found to continue emitting gases even in the dark after it had been exposed to the sun. The study found plastic bags, the most commonly used and discarded plastic in the world, emitted the largest amount of greenhouse gases. In a press release by the University of Hawaii, Dr. Royer and her team are now working to constrain the overall greenhouse gas emissions from plastics. Don't flush your contacts down the can after watching this. A new study by Arizona State University found that people flushing their disposable contacts could be contributing to plastics pollution. Of the around 45 million Americans who wear contacts, 50 to 20 percent discard their old lenses by flushing them down the toilet or sink. Because the contact lenses are made with stronger plastics, they do not break down when exposed to microbes at a sewage treatment plant. Researchers found that the old contacts instead become smaller pieces and are prevalent in wastewater sludge after sewage treatment. This sludge is then deposited on land where lenses can be washed into lakes and rivers where they're consumed by fish, birds, or other animals. The study, presented at the National Meeting and Exposition of the American Chemical Society, estimates between 1.8 to 3.4 billion lenses get flushed per year, equaling 20 to 23 metric tons of plastic waste. Canada is finally joining the anti-plastic movement. Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau announced on Monday that Canada will ban harmful single-use plastics as early as 2021. While the specific products to be outlawed have yet to be decided, CNN reports that bags, straws, cutlery and stirring sticks may be included. According to DW, Trudeau said plastic producers will be held responsible for the full life cycle of their products and that manufacturers and the companies using the products will need to provide recycling plans. The government would also work with the companies to establish targets on waste. The BBC reports that currently, less than 10% of plastics are recycled in Canada. Each year, the country throws away 3 million tons of plastic waste, which end up in landfills and incinerators, litter beaches and parks, and pollute bodies of water. According to the Canadian government, over a million birds and 100,000 sea mammals are injured or die globally each year when they mistake plastic for food. Trudeau claims that banning single-use plastic will not only reduce pollution and protect the environment, but also create 42,000 jobs in the recycling and recovery industries. Canada's anti-plastic crusade comes after the EU and the United Kingdom passed similar bans in late March and May, respectively. For more news animations and explainers, hit the subscribe and bell button to join the Tomo News family. Thanks for watching.